you know, guys, what do a healthy Pelicans actually look like? Because we really don't know. So let me break it down for you guys today. What is good, YouTube? What is good, everybody? What is good, grandmas, grandpas, uncles, aunties, sisters, brothers, whoever's watching? Oh, yeah, whoever's watching this video today. What is good, man? It's your boy with the most Jordan Kitchens. And I am back again for another episode of the Pelican Scoop. And today, today we're going to talk about something that's been talked about all the time for the Pelicans for the last 10 years, basically, is, is health. Even when Anthony Davis was here, health. We're going to talk about health because health is wealth at the end of the day. But first, for everybody gets, before you start getting into it, get your popcorn ready. It's going to be a nice little session. It's going to be a nice session today. All right, like, comment, subscribe. Smash that like button. Hit the bell notification because we're going to keep coming. Pause. We're going to keep bringing these comments. We're going to keep bringing the content because the season is right around the corner. And I am dying for some Pelicans basketball. But anyways, so in my last video, I dropped Tuesday. I got a comment on there from Wantani Mechanical 7742. I'm going to put the comment up here on the screen. Uh, he commented, if healthy Pelicans are a very difficult team to beat, injuries are their biggest problem. And one tiny mechanical seven seven four two. Thank you for watching. Thank you for commenting, by the way. And you are a thousand percent correct. So you're the inspiration behind this video today because health is wealth. And honestly, uh, I'm gonna give everybody a chance right now. What does a healthy Pelicans look like? Does anybody know? Does anybody know? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Nobody knows what a healthy Pelicans team looks like because, truthfully and honestly, we have never been healthy in the last. Since basically the, the whole David Griffin, Zion, Brandon Ingram era, they have never been healthy. And it feels like once they are healthy, that it finally looks like they turn the leaf. It's like, boom, stop. That is not what y'all do. You guys are not. This is not what y'all do. Y'all don't, don't get the good injury bug luck. So to, to, let, me just, let me just put it in perspective for everybody. Put a little, let me put a little perspective. So, but speaking of like a healthy Pelican, but like what does a healthy Zion look like too? You can say the same thing about Brandon Ingram, but it's a healthy Brandon Ingram looks like. I mean, Trey Murphy had his uh, his meniscus injury last year, but he's typically not a, like a hurt player. But he only played 57 games last year. So Brandon Ingram played 64 games. Zion played his career high of 70. CJ played 66. Herb Jones, you know, Mr. Iron Man, played 76. But to give a little bit more context to that, yes, this is not the old, you know, NBA where guys are supposed to play 82 games. That is not how the new game is played. Guys, it's rare you'll get a guy that'll play 82 games. Like, Mikael Bridges is like an anomaly right now because he plays every game, basically. He doesn't, you know, doesn't sit out. does just plays. Anthony Edwards tries to, you know, pride himself on that, not missing any games, too. But that's not, what, that's not how the NBA is nowadays. So, you know, looking at these numbers, between 65 and of course, 82 games. Like that's where I'm. That's a healthy season in between. Well, they have to if you want to be uh, if you want to be considered for the awards now. That's in the uh, CBA. Like you have to play a certain amount of games. So maybe that's why. But usually around 65 to 82 games. That's what you're looking at. So Zion and specifically, I mean, his rookie year he played 24. He played 61 the year. The next year after that it was a big step up. That 61 year. Now, the, the last year with Stan, well, the only year with Stan Van Gundy, where he kind of introduced that point Zion role. So it really felt at one point Stan Van Gundy got the, you know, the most out of him. But Zion didn't finish that season, if y'all remember. I, I think that's year he broke his thumb and he had to, well, he wasn't making the playoffs, but he had to, you know, miss the remainder of the season. And that summer, he ended up breaking his foot and missed the whole season. The next year, that 2021, 20, 2022 season, Zion didn't even play. All right, he had that broken. That was the whole controversy season. That was the season where, you know, we, they get C.J. McCollum, and he can't even – he's trying to reach out to Zion. Zion's not, you know, the whole – Zion's a bad teammate. You know, J.J. Redick was, was cooking him on ESPN. Like, the whole drama behind Zion was that year because I guess he was still – you know, he was, he was young. He's still young. I mean, Zion, what, four months younger than me? So, he's still young. I mean, I'm not there, so I can't really tell you what was going on through his head and whatnot, but Zion missed the whole season. And then you come back, you rebound the next year, and that was the year that the Pelicans were the number one seed 
in December. We're looking real good. That was my Zion. Got the 360 dunk on the Suns. Man, that was special. That was special. Then he uh, pulled his hamstring against the Sixers, if I'm not mistaken. It was like January 2nd. He pulled his hamstring against the Sixers. And that was lights out. That was the last time we seen Zion that whole season. If y'all remember, he was in MVP talks. They was like, man, this is what we've been waiting for. And it, he just, it still hurts me. It still hurts me because it was the number one seed. It was finally looking like this is, this is it. This is what we always wanted. And then just poof, like that. The NBA giveth and the NBA taketh away. And then the next year, well, last year, plays 70 games. It's the best he's ever looked. He's finally healthy. You know, they, they, they introduced the back-to-back thing where he would, you know, he didn't play. Like, he'll play the first game of the back-to-back but didn't play the second game. They, they did that for about basically the whole year until, like, the last two months of the season. Then he started playing some of the back-to-backs. But when we really needed him, I will say that, when we really needed him, he came through. He plays 70 games, right? Leads up to this marquee mega matchup in a play-in game against the Lakers. LeBron James, Anthony Davis, we at home. The blender's rocking. Zion gives you 40. He, not only does it give you 40, because Brandon Ingram, he, Brandon Ingram came back that game. No, he came back the game before against the Kings, or that was the game after. But Brandon Ingram came back this game. I mean, he was hurt. We're going we're to talk about Brandon. He was hurt. He was off. He was real off. He looked rusty. He was rusty. We chalked it up to being rusty. And Zion just said, no, we're not losing this game. I'm putting God on my back. We're, I'm going to... This is my team. This is my city. I'm putting them on my back, and I'm going to will this team to victory. And he was doing that. He was. If Zion doesn't blow his hamstring out, we were winning that ball game. There's no doubt in my mind the Pelicans were winning that ball game. Not we, but the Pelicans were winning that ball game. And then, like I said, just terrible luck. Poof, go off for a layup, come down. I guess it, I guess this is when he jumped to, for the layup. And it just. Yeah, that's that's all she wrote. That's the last time we seen him last year. So you you never you you really don't know what a healthy Pelicans look like because you don't even know what a healthy Zion Williamson looks like. Like you get bits and pieces of it. You get bits and pieces of it. But another thing about you know we're not really getting a healthy Zion. So he played his most games last year, but his numbers were down. Like his his minutes were down a couple minutes from thirty three to thirty one. He only averaged 20, well, 23 points, 22.9, rounded up to 23, you know, 5.8 boards and five assists. And then this year, the rebounds got to go up. But that's a, that's a conversation for another day, but the rebounds got to go up. So all his numbers were down, but if you, it's one of those weird, it's one of those weird situations where you, if you watch the game, it's not, you, you get it. Like, it wasn't that he wasn't producing. It's just like, once you finally get everything clicking, it's like, boom, your tire blows. <laughs> Your, your alternator breaks, you know. You finally get your brakes to work on your car. Now it's another problem. Now, now the gas, the gas light won't come on. You know, it's stuff like that. That's what that's that's what you, that's what I think about the Pelicans sometimes. It's like everything could be going right, but deep down inside, you know, it's just something's going to happen. So let's bring it back to this year about something's going to happen. So Brandon Ingram got hurt on March twenty first. I guess Orlando Magic when he uh, I hyperextended his knee. Up until that point, leading up into that game, the Pelicans were were seven and one. They were rolling, you know. They were started the whole we got to win fifty games. That the whole fifty games thing going. They're trying to win fifty games. They're pushing towards it. Look great. Everybody's uh, firing on all cylinders. Brandon, CJ, B. I don't say Bi. Zion, Trey Murphy, right? Herb. They look amazing. B.I. goes down. And then after that, from going 7-1 before that, you go 7-6 down the stretch. Add in a four-game losing streak. Add in not even just one of those. Out of those four, that four-game losing streak, the last one was the worst one. Against the Spurs, nail-biter against Wimby. Just put the nail in the coffin. And at that point, you really felt like it was over with. But now we're even going to get 50 games. Like, this is, this is crazy. Right? You finally get Zion fully healthy. All year, you get Bi relatively healthy all year. Trey Murphy came back middle of the season, CJ healthy, and then boom, just like that, just like that, on a routine play. I'm looking at him. It was, it was a routine play. It wasn't like it was something crazy. So, 
That's why we just don't know. You really don't know. Every year for the last five to six years, what has been the main thing every year when you go into the season about the Pelicans? Every, every media outlet, everybody. Oh, super talented roster, super deep, young, young budding stars, but can they stay healthy? Hell, ugh. Can they stay healthy? Every year. Every year it's the same story. Can they stay healthy? And truth at this point, nobody knows. We can sit there. I can sit there and be like, yeah, yeah, this is this is new leaf. Yeah, this is definitely. No, because people have been saying that for the last five to six years. At a certain point, it's a common denominator. You know, it, it sucks to say it, but like, look, at like the, look at the team like the Celtics. Other than Porzingis being hurt, they had everybody. And they played into the finals. They had everybody. They had Tatum, they had Drew Holiday, they had Jalen Brown, they had Derek White. I mean, Przingis in and out. You still got Al Horford, Pritchard. Like, they're healthy. You, it's, it's weird. The NBA is, it's, I don't know if it's the medical staff. I don't know what it is. But I know one thing for sure. I know one thing for certain, though. If the Pelicans are even going to remotely bring some type of noise in this revamped Western Conference this year, they need to be healthy. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. They have to be healthy. Like they're if you want to compete in the Western Conference, the Gauntlet. I didn't I didn't made videos where I named the top ten, really the top 12, 14. Really like 14 teams. About 14 of them, honestly. Check the stats. About 14 of them. You're not gonna do anything if you're not healthy, regardless. So if you if you think that <laughs> Zion can go down, B.I. can go down, Herb, DeJounte, God forbid DeJounte go down. Like, now you have square one because you got rid of uh, Dyson Daniels, you got rid of Najee Marshall. So now you're you, you lack, you, I guess you're lacking depth because you still got some guys, but you're lacking a couple depth pieces. You know, JV's gone too, but he, he, that might be a little addition by subtraction. Some people might not like to hear me say that, but that might be addition by subtraction, honestly, especially if Carlo turns out to be nice. But you're not doing nothing if you're not healthy. And every year they're not healthy, so that's why the Pelicans don't do anything. And that's just the bottom line. It's the cold hard facts of the moment. It's the cold hard facts. I can't sugarcoat it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it because that's just what it is at this point. You got teams like the Celtics that can just stay pretty relatively, dodge the injury bug all year. But it's really more crazy that they did that and made it to the finals. You know, usually you're going to lose. You have casualties along the way. And Przingis is the biggest casualty, basically. And they, and they was moving like he... They could have won without him, honestly. They pretty much did win without him because he got hurt in the finals too. So, you know, some teams are luckier than others. Health is wealth. So, what can the Pelicans do? It don't matter. If, it don't matter what they can do. If they're not healthy, it doesn't matter. And and it sucks to say that, but the numbers don't lie. We seen we seen seven and one before Bi gets hurt. That's everybody healthy. One person down, Bi, you go seven and six. And if it wasn't for Zion, CJ, and Trey putting the team on their back and you know, carving together, I think it was like a four-game win streak down the stretch before they lost against the Lakers. Who knows? And that's why you're not at 50 wins, you're at 49. You was one game out. 49 wins. You was one game away from 50. Franchise record. One game away. Health. Health as well. But that is another episode of Pelican Scoop. No, it's got a little sad and depressing kind of a little bit, but look, man, that's just what it is. It's what it is. The Pelicans have to be healthy. And you guys were rocking with me. Like I said, smash that like button, comment, because I'm pulling the comments up. I, trust me, I, I, I'll feature in a video like I did my boy Juan Tiny Mechanical 7742. But y'all, y'all just stay easy, man. Stay easy out there. This has been your boy Jordan Kitchens, and I am signing out. Peace.